and um, like club, like general club meetings and officer board meetings. Um, keep an up to date and accurate member roster, and obviously just be an active member in your club. So, like I said before, some of these responsibilities can change. I know sometimes um, some clubs have their vice presidents make sign-ins and agendas, but again, that's something you'll have to like talk to your club president about. But like I said, the main thing that will not change is you have to do the monthly report form or the MRF. So before we get into that, um, I'll talk about uh, where the MRF goes to. So obviously they will go to your lieutenant governor. Now, if you were an officer last year, you'll know that like there was a specific uh, email for each of your lieutenant governors and there was an email format. That email format has changed. They have new, um, all the LTGs have new emails. So you can see like I put the format here. So it's D28 and then whatever your direction is, .ltg at cnhkeyclub.org. If all of the LTGs could put their emails in the chat just so like everyone has it, um, that'd be nice. Thank you. So it goes to your lieutenant governor, no matter what. It goes to your division secretary as well. So Ooh. as of right now, uh, none of the divisions have a DLT yet. But when they do, please be in contact with your LTG because they're going to send out the division secretary email. And then you'll also have to send the MRF to the division secretary. You'll have to send it to the sponsoring Kiwanis Club, like your Kiwanis advisor or the Kiwanis Club president, and the your club advisor and your and the region advisor, Mrs. Santi. And if Ms. Santi, you could also put your email in the chat because she also got a new email. Um, if you put your email in the chat, that'd be great. So, like I said, these are the people that it has to go to. Some um, uh, some secretaries will also send the MRF to their president um, if they want to, but again. That's that's like everything else, but you have to send it to these specific people. Um, some other stuff, like I said, you guys have to keep an accurate and up-to-date club roster. You, the secretary, or not secretary, the treasurer of your club will help you with that. And this will mostly come around um, when dues payment season comes around in like fall. Um, when people start paying their dues, you have to keep that. Uh, recognizing members. so. When you guys look at the MRFs, you'll look at how active each member is in the club, like how much service they do and everything. So you will be a key part in helping the club recognize us members for like if you guys do member of the month. Uh, okay, you have to complete the 21 to 22 club officer information. I don't believe that's on there in the cyber key yet because the term has just started. Um, but when it is, please be in contact with your LTGs and they'll make sure that you know. And also, you have to submit the future election results to all the MRF the, all the MRF recipients that I said before. Um, there's a tab in the MRF that I'll go into later where you have to put in the put in the election results for the 2022 to 23 officers, so that your new LTG will be able to like have all that information once the term starts. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, the role of a secretary organization being secretary is the most like you have to be organized there's no like no other way you have to be organized about everything that you do okay um recording minutes so like i said before you have to take club general club meeting minutes and um officer officer board board officer meeting minutes sorry i can't talk today um so the photo on the side is just like a template that you can use, but obviously whatever works for you. The main things that people put are the time of call to order. So when the meeting is called to order, what time, the date, attendance, old business, new business, and uh, and what time the meeting adjourns. So please just keep it simple. There's no need to make it like really fancy or pretty or everything. It just has to have all the information. Um, and you will send this to your club board and advisors after each meeting, just so they also have it. If I'm going too fast, please like someone stop me or like ask me a question or anything. Alrighty, um, recording service hours. So you guys need to be the ones to keep track of every service hour that you, every member in your club do does. So these are some ways that you can keep track of it. Obviously, like this year, most people have been using a Google form and Google Classroom to keep track of it. But if you if you guys have in-person events, then pencil paper can also work too. Um, my biggest, what's it called? My biggest advice for this, because I've seen some clubs that don't do it, 
Um, when you ask for service hours for members, please ask them to also include like a photo of proof that they did the service. Because, yeah, especially last year, a lot of people tried to fake hours. A lot of people were like trying to embellish their hours. So you want photographic proof of that. Uh, oh, yes. And it's also good for articles and visuals. So when you do receive those photos, you can always send them to your club editor and they can put it in for articles and visuals that are also due each month. Okay, so, but first you, have, you guys have to understand what service really is. So like the slide says, it's any unpaid community service, like commu any unpaid event that benefits the community. So fundraising does count, but you can't give service hours based on like, like one hour for every dollar donated for fundraising, it would have to be like um, if you spend time like doing an event or at somewhere that helps donate or fundraise money, that would count. Um, like if you were at a car wash or something, but not like monetary, not like monetary like transitions. Um, you can also, this is something they emphasized a lot this last term because everything was online. Community service, like service hours are given for how much time you spend on the activity. So you can't just be like, oh, for every two like cards made, you'll get an hour of service. No, it's just how much time they spend on the card. So if they spend half an hour, they get half an hour. If they spend three hours, they get three hours. And as you go throughout the term, you'll be able to distinguish when people are kind of embellishing their hours. Because if you like, if you look at the photos of the cards and they look kind of like, you know, like bare minimum, obviously, and they said they spent three hours, obviously, that's a lie. So you'll have to be uh, diligent in catching that kind of stuff. Okay, that is where I'm going to stop the presentation for right now, and I'm going to move on to the MRF everyone's favorite form let me quickly share my screen for that and please if i go too fast with the mrf or you have any questions please let me know and i'll slow it down um, while she's doing that you are supposed to be getting a new mrf it is going to be a google form it is not released yet, but it is very similar to what Mini is going to go over in Excel. Once your LTGs get that, they'll send it to you, which will hopefully be before the end of the month. Okay, so here is the MRF. It is a giant Excel sheet for now um, with a bunch of tabs, and I will be going over every tab for you guys. So this is just the instructions page you can come back to it at the end of the or like throughout the term if you need to but it just gives a basic um overview of each of the tabs but that's all that's in the instructions um task one okay also like let's say you want to read what's up here just go look, like drag that's the word drag it up um and you'll be able to see it but this is just basic club information, your address, the club name, this number. You can get, if you guys don't know, like information like your club number or anything like that, you can always get it from the previous MRF or from your LTG. Um, everything basic like all your advisors, the officers, and just some social media questions. Now, I'm going to input this. I'm going to put, I just call it CTA because that's my home club. Um, so let's say I put word CTA and I fill out all this information. Okay. So once you fill out all this information, you go to the club roster and directory. The one thing that I love about the MRF is that everything transfers over, or like a lot of things transfer over. So like like you can see, it says like club was CTA because I put it in in the task one tab. While I while I'm on that track. Please do not change the formulas. It's wor It's bad when you change the formulas in Excel, and it's even worse when you do it in Google Sheets. Um, like you can see, there's a formula for like this thing. So if you change it, it'll just be a mess. Don't edit that kind of stuff. Um, it'll just make your life harder. Okay, so that's that. You put all your advisor's name. You put all your advisors and the contact information, and this is where you'll put all the, what's it called? 
all the um all the information for your club members so i'm actually gonna do this so you know obviously you don't need all this information like if you don't know their mailing address that's fine but the things i highly suggest that you have is obviously um the name if they're an officer you have to put their um position their email if you have their phone number that's good too their grad year and whether or not their dues paid and especially dues paid and um like their names are the most important so i'm just gonna type in i'll type in ma sam and then ma no i'll type in my name okay and ltg ltg and member technically so let's say yeah let's say we all paid our dues okay so once you have this, you would want to do like you want you want to change it to alphabetical order. So you just copy all of why is my computer not working? Copy all of this. Make sure like everything is copied. Um, there's a sort and filter thing at the top. I think it's different with Google Sheets, but there is like somewhere that you can sort it. I think it's in data, but on Excel it is um, search and filter, sort A to Z, and wow, everything's all sorted. Um, so I'm going to just like, we'll say someone's name, BB, uh, with the member, and they haven't paid. Again, you would just copy everything, my computer's computer. Copy everything, search and filter, sort A to Z, and now he's at the top, right? OK. And you would do this any time that you get new members, you would add all their information here. Do you guys have any questions for right now? If not, I'm going to continue. Um, OK, service record. So like I said, a lot of the MRF transfers over. All the names and whether or not their dues paid transfer over. Wow. Really important to highlight all. Otherwise, you'll mess up the service record. Yeah, that's something that that's a mistake that I made in like when I was um, first doing like the division MRF and I was looking at the club MRF, so I accidentally made that mistake. So please highlight like all the rows that have information. Um, so back to this. Everything transfers over for member names and dues paid. Alrighty. This is where you'll document every single service hour that every single member completes. So let's say. So you can see like it has event, date, and total service. So let's say I volunteer at the hospital and I volunteer for 10 hours. So you can see it says next to my name, I have 10 hours. The club in total has 10 hours. And if you, I'm gonna highlight this. If you scroll all the way over here, you can see that like at my name, I have 10 hours and that the club total has 10 hours. So let's say, Oh yeah, for the date. If they if they volunteered for a specific date and you know that, you would just put that specific date, like if I did April second. But let's say I volunteered at the hospital and I volunteered like every single Saturday and every single Sunday of the month. You could just put April for that, like if there's too many dates. If you want, you can put each specific date, but if you know that they did it for the month of April, um, you can just put like that month. Is it important to be really specific when naming service events or can they just be broad? Um, in that case, it is up to you, but like mostly you would want, if there is a specific name, like if like Springs Preserve does their Halloween thing, I forgot what the name is. Um, you would do that if it's like trick or treat for whatever you would do like that name. But if it's just like volunteering at, if it's volunteering, like helping a teacher grade papers, you could do teacher assistance, stuff like that. It's up to you with that. A lot of this, especially with this tab, it is like a lot of it is up to you how detailed you want to be. So let's say uh, volunteering at the hospital for the month of April, let's say Sam does 50 hours. Once, you, once a member completes 50 hours, it'll light up green because that is part of the requirements that you need to be a full like key club member. You have to be dues paid and you have to have 50 hours. So it lights up green just to let you know. Um, okay. So that's happened. You fill out all these all these columns. And let's say you come to this. 
and you have more service events, but you ran out. So what you would do, I'm gonna like full screen this for a second because I need to see. Um, what you would do is, it says add more columns before you use this. So you would highlight, highlight this entire column and you would insert. And right there you can see there is a new column inserted. Now, like I said, all of these have formulas. It's like they have the sums of everything. Since you just created this one, you don't have that. So you would have to put in the formula just for the ones that you created, nothing else. So you would put in like equals sum. And then you don't have to type in everything. You can just like highlight, highlight it down. So all that's highlighted, you would press enter. And that's when you get that like zero number. So the like other way that you can do that is click on the box prior to it. Like this one? No, 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 no. The, I'm sorry, in the green. Oh, that? See the little square in the corner? If you grab that square and hold it and drag it over, it updates the formula for the current column that you're in, but copies the exact same formula okay. rather than you having to type it. Oh, that's nice. I actually didn't know that. Thank you. Yep. Um, but yes, those are the two ways that you can do that. So let's say if I volunteer, if some this person D volunteers for 10 hours, then you can see like that 10 has been updated. Um, while I said you don't have to like, how detailed you are with this has is up to you, you do have to be accurate. It's a big difference between those two words. You do have to be accurate. You do have to list every service hour that the members complete, okay? Any questions on the service record tab? Okay, I'll be going to member recognition program. Wow. So this is how your members are recognized on a district level and also like, or technically it is on a division level. This is how your members are recognized. So like I said, the names and everything transferred over. To be recognized as a member, like I said, you have to be dues paid and you have to have 50 hours. That's the lowest recognition is bronze level. And then however many more service events you do or service hours you complete, you rise up for that. To, al to also part of the requirements to get these levels, you have to complete certain events. Now, I really liked, because two years ago, it was really like this tab in particular was really messy, but they cleaned it up this year. And I hope they continue to have that in the Google Sheets. But let's say that I attend a training event you would just put an X there and that would be one training event towards your requirements. Um, so training events would be considered OTC. So all of you guys already have one training event. OTC, CTC, RTC, every member that attended RTC, you have to quit for this. Um, Kiwanis families events are, so if you guys host an event with your Kiwanis club, um, that would count interclub. If you guys host an event with like another club in your division or even like any any other key club in CNH would count as an interclub. Um, and any member who attends that inner club would get an X right there. Division events that counts as DCMs, division service events, division socials, anything like that. And district events, if there's any district webinars or Fall Rally would also count as a district event. So all the members who attend that, same thing with international. If a member submitted a photo for articles and visuals, like if a member submitted to the editor their um, photo of them doing service and like a little paragraph of them explaining the service that they did, this would also count for that. Um, and if they were an event or a project chair, so if you guys have like giant socials and you guys host or you have people be chairs, then that would also count. Um, doo -doo, I'm like trying to read this sideways. <laughs> Division, region workshop facilitator, we don't really do that. And then if you guys have club committees. For, um, and you just put an X when the criteria, yes, Miguel, you just put an X. So if, would we add more for articles and visuals? No, you wouldn't. Don't, 
add anything to this please don't everything is just it's perfect as it is don't add anything else um the reason you don't is because you technically only, like let's say for articles of visuals you only need two articles of visuals submitted to be considered for the gold ring so that's why um you would just fill it out and at the end of the year not technically in january when this in january when this tab is due then you would see like oh this member completed five out of 13 um, requirements they get bronze i will say this from experience please do not slack off on this please work on it throughout the year so like every time you have like a DC, uh, every time you call the to dcm or every time you guys have an event please work on this tab because it is due in january and when you do like I remember secretaries were like rushing to finish and then you can make mistakes and then you have to look through months of attendance records. And that's why attendance records are really um, important is because of this like MRP tab. Someone asked a question and I didn't see it. So let me, you know, I need a full screen. Oh, I can read it for you. Oh, do members you. have to do anything for MRP or is it all just recorded on the MRF? Uh, they don't have to do anything like on this tab. You have to like record everything. Do you mean like submit an application, Miggy? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, like do they have to actually submit any type of application at all? Or is it just like on the secretary, whatever they fill out? It's on the secretary. On the secretary. Okay. And this is like one of the easiest and one of like the most important ways that your members will be recognized not only on the division level but like if you guys went to decon and you saw all the names appear um that's how these members get recognized uh sorry it went like miss Andy, can you read amy's question it like went away before i could read it what do we put in the name section to the far end of the sheet you would just copy and paste the names there it's just um to like have it easier to have it be a little bit easier. Okay. You can actually tell Excel and Google both to do that. Um, put an equal sign mini. Yeah. Uh, equal. And then scroll back over to the beginning where the name actually is. Click on it. Nope, just click on it and hit enter. So, right. and now you can do the little grab the corner boxy thing and drag it all the way down and it'll copy that formula all the way down the sheet so you don't have to type their names in a second time and it's like Minnie said it's just so that you can see what level they're at so their name is right next to the totals yes does anyone else have any other questions about mrp tab this is very important. Don't slack off on this. If nothing else, I'm going to move on. Uh, Club elections tab. You do not touch this until you have done next year's club elections. So this information, this will not be like the 2021 to 22 club officers. That'll, this will be for next year's offices. So once you guys do elections, you guys have to like submit all the information for each of your positions. And this will be when it's submitted to the LTG. This will actually be given to the new LTG after like Sam and Snow and Austin and Reagan. It'll be given to the new LTG so that they already have the information for their new club. Please fill it out. Um, please don't forget to fill it out when like after you have elections because then LTGs have to like search for your club information, for your officer's information. All right. Uh, historian and SAA are not on there, I think. You would just put that as an editor. That would either be an editor or for like SAA it would be like a vice president type of position. Yes. Um, any other questions about that? Okay. Annual reports. Okay. So each year CNH um, recognizes clubs as a whole based on distinguished or diamond distinguished and they're all based on the annual report score so in this tab you have nothing to fill out like there's this where it's like reports completed monthly 
monthly activity. So if you submitted an MRF every month, it would click yes there. But I just click no. Um, but everything else on this, you don't fill it out. And let me show you. So see here, where is it? See here where it says, okay, Atten in 57, attendance at regional training conference, officer and member. You can't click that, but if you go, and I promise I'll explain this when I get to it. If you go to October and you put yes for both officers and members attended, and you go back to, I promise I'll explain the monthly tabs, but when you go back to annual report tab, you see it's changed and you see your score has increased from a zero to a one. Now, it gives you like a breakdown here of what each sec what each section on the AAR tab means and how many points you can get from it. Um, so yes, but otherwise else you don't touch anything on this tab. It's a good way for you to, it's a good thing for you to look at throughout the year and see like how your club has, oh, it takes information. Yes, it takes information from the other tab so you don't touch it at all. It's good to see, um, as a tracker, so like if you if you are hoping for your club to be distinguished or diamond distinguished, which I hope all of you are, um, you can see like how close you are to the goal. I think for distinguished, it's like one forty, and diamond distinguished, it's one seventy, something around there. One, I think it's one forty nine for distinguished. Okay. So yeah. And so those down at the bottom, what I like to show my secretary, scroll down there. Yep. So I can't read that. Oh my God. Um, there we go. Nope. You're good. Go. Uh, so where it says part one, a, okay. I tell them, okay, go down and look. It says the first line right under it has five, one, one, two, blah, blah, blah. And then it says one, a one B one C one D. Well, those are all zeros. Okay. So let's figure out what part one 1a is so remember that number you scroll up to part one of the tab of this page and then you find where it says 1a in the parentheses after the blanks i'm trying to find it i can't find it. So i don't i don't see 1a we'll do 1c because i can see it right there uh not anymore you just moved it quit wiggling Quick I filled out the RTC one. I filled out the RTC one so I can find that quickly. Um, so like part one A and then four A for RTC. Okay, there you go. Yeah. See, it's right there for RTC. Okay. So you will be able to say, "Oh, I didn't fill out that we had RTC. That's why that's zero. And RTC is in October, so I should go back to the October tab and fix it." And like Minnie said, she's going to tell you the monthly tabs here in a minute, but. It kind of gives you a single spot to look at so you can analyze where your club is at and where they need help with, if that makes sense. All right, Minnie, back to you. Thank you. Um, but yes, it's a good way to track, see how your club is doing. And yeah, does anyone have any questions on AAR? not i'm going to continue projects list again this is a tab that gets all their information from another tab so you don't fill out anything so for let's say for the projects list i'm going to go back I'll go to october let's say for october people volunteer at the hospital for total member hours let's say there's 40 members or 40 service hours for hospital and 10 members went there okay so 10 members volunteered in the month of October. So if you go for a project list and you scroll all the way down to October, you can see that it does say hospital and you can see like the 10 members and the 40 hours. So again, this is just nice to kind of see. And right there at the bottom is your total. You will not need any more like of these, like you will not need any more, you will not need to add any more like months or areas for the months um so yes again you don't touch this tab it just takes their information from everything else <sighs> all righty i'm gonna continue to the monthly tabs the monthly tabs is what you're gonna be 
working on every month. It has to be updated. Um, it has to be accurate. Like I said, your accuracy in the monthly report or the, in the monthly tabs is going to affect your AAR and your AAR score. So like this top half is kind of self-explanatory, um, how many members you have. So if you get like 10 new members, if you get 10 new members who paid in the month of October, wow, your current goes up by 10, amazing. Um, attendance, at, like attendance at meetings and what type of meetings there are, you just do like yes or no, and then how many uh, members present and then what day, so, like what day of the month. Um, all these like communication stuff. I'll tell you this as a previous LTG, when people didn't fill like this little section out and they put no communication from your LTG this month, it ticked me off so much because I was like, I did text you guys, like I texted you guys, I emailed, and they know it, they just didn't uh, fill it out. So please like fill out every single thing. Um, so yeah, if you guys attended a DCM, a Kwani's DCM, if you know like stuff that obviously didn't happen, like there's no decon in October, that's in April, don't just leave it as no. But like I said, for like RTC, it says yes on both because it's October. Uh, special events, any reports that you have, usually Vegas doesn't do that. Um, and the member relations. So you will have to talk with like your bulletin editor if they submitted a newsletter and when, um, stuff like that. Project section. This is where, like I said before, you would put all the project, all the service projects that the members did. So from that service record tab, you would take the names and then like how many members participated in the hours and you would fill it out here. You would also put what type of project that it is. So obviously this like at the hospital, it was a service project. Um, it was a project with another organization uh, for this kind of stuff. If you see, let me zoom in. Major emphasis focus, anything that's benefiting kids. So if you volunteered at a daycare or a children's hospital, anything like that, or if you made cards for children's and hospitals, that would be major emphasis because it's helping with kids. Um, governor's project, I want to say Miss Santiago. Kiwanis Family House. Thank you. Um, so if it was like, if it was a service project for Kiwanians or any other member of the K family, then that would be your governor's project. No, um, no, no, no. The Kiwanis family house is... Um, no. Like the actual... Yes. There is a there is a Kiwanis family house, kind of like Ronald McDonald house here in Vegas. In... Um, uh, I always get the city wrong. Ben Henderson? Sacramento is where, I think, uh, the... Kiwanis family house. No, it's like Ronald McDonald house, Dylan. So what it is, is it's a house kind of dorm type place where when kids are hospitalized, their families get to stay at the house so that they can stay uh, local to the hospital that the kid is in. Okay. Ronald McDonald's house does that here for us at, with, um, it's UMC, right? Think so. I think it's UMC that they do that for, but the actual Kiwanis house that we help with is in California and Sacramento. That's the governor's project. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Amy asked a question. Can you please do If it? we have trouble, you should ask the LTGs or your advisors might be able to help you, or you can email me and ask. Yes. So along with service projects, you also put, like you can see, you also put fundraisers, any fundraisers that you have co-participated in. So let's say, you guys did a brew tea bar fundraiser. And obviously there would be no quote unquote hours unless someone helped with, um, if you were like, like I know what West Tech did is like they had it like a booth in front of the cafeteria and then officers would be like handing out thank you. That was the word I was looking for, like handing them out. That would count as hours, but 
other than that, it wouldn't. So let's say you had, if you had that brew tea fundraiser, um, you would obviously mark X for fundraiser. And you would have to distinguish whether it's funds going towards like service or if they're going towards this charity, making signs from around the school. That would also count as like the service hours. Um, if you made like graphics to promote it and everything or posters. So for monthly service hours, what if people turn in hours late? Okay, if they turn in hours late, don't discourage them. You will have to go back into the monthly tab and fill out those hours. So if it's October and they sent in hours from July, then you're going to have to go back into July and fix it. And you're going to have to add it into the service record and fix it. Please do not discourage members from turning in late service hours just like because it's more work on you. Obviously, encourage them to be on time, but let's say if they do turn it in late, don't just be like, oh, we're not accepting those hours anymore. And please reiterate to your members that they like you can't, they can't accept late hours. Because a lot of members don't know that. So what they do is they just like let those hours sit and then it like goes to waste. Um, if, they if they hand out flyers for a fundraiser, how many hours would that be? It would be either the time that they're like hanging them up in the school or how however long they're making the flyers for okay um but yes don't discourage members don't be like we're not accepting late hours because you you will accept late hours <laughs> um i remember like there was one club where it was the last mrf submission and members submitted hours from every single month of the term beforehand and they had to go in and change every single month of the term. That was not fun for either the club secretary or the division secretary. So please encourage your club to be on time. Encourage your club members to turn in hours on time, but don't, but still accept late hours. What was I talking about? Fundraise. So obviously it'd be fundraise for service. So for a charity, or if it was going into the club's bank account for like other like club funds, you would have to distinguish that. Okay, that's the project section. You have your, those late hours could push the club into distinguish. Yes, please don't discourage members from turning in late hours. Your club snapshot, just like a paragraph or two of what your club did throughout the month, highs, lows, everything, like achievement, success. If you guys did monthly recognition, who is a member of the month, stuff like that, you know, just a snapshot. Project snapshots. So as you can see, like for hospital and blue tea, it transferred over from the project section. So did that, or wait, let me for blue tea, let me just put like $20. Okay. So as you can see, like the funds raised and the hours served transferred over. All you would have to do is put in the chair. So the chair is anyone who's hosting the event. So for like the brew tea fundraiser, it would be like, let's put this, like West CTA Key Club um, or the president's name. And for like hospital, you would ask the member like, hey, who is your, um, like either who was the volunteer coordinator at the hospital or you could just put the hospital name. Um, so that's what would go there as the chair. And that's something you do have to fill out. Okay uh club snapshot just like a paragraph or two about what your club did during the month any achievements any struggles anything like that just what your club has been doing for the month okay and i very very highly doubt you will need more than 25 to the point where like don't add anything else you won't need more than 25. if for some reason you do then you would like start grouping stuff together so it doesn't have to be a huge essay. It doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, like I said, just a paragraph works. Any questions on the monthly tab? This is something that you'll fill out, like I said, every single month until the end of the term in March of next year. And this is something you'll like turn in. This is your main thing that you're going to do. If there is no more questions. That is the end of the MRF. Congrats.
or I have a quick question about the club roster. What, what information about each member is needed and what is optional? So let me go back to that tab. Um, club roster, the name and whether or not there's do, whether or not their dues paid is absolutely necessary because like I said, it transfers over to different tabs. Um, stuff like position, if they have a club position or if they're like LTT, and email grad number and phone number or grad year and phone number, that is highly encouraged. So when you do meetings, you'll have like, you should definitely have meeting signups where members put in all this information and that's how you would get the information from the MRF. The stuff like member ID and mailing address and city you don't need. <clears throat> Sorry, I got something in my throat. Yep, it's based on the MRF. So around January, your LTG will get an email and they'll be like, hey, these are the clubs that you have that um, qualify for di distinguished and diamond distinguished. Let us know if there's any mistakes. And at that point, your LTG will be like, hey, you've qualified for this. Let's see if there's any mistakes. So there's no application. It's just based on the MRF. Any more questions on the MRF before I exit out and go back to sharing my presentation? Because we're not done. I'm going to say something. All of the Las Vegas clubs should be able to hit distinguished. All of you. Often, we do not. We have a very few amount that are distinguished because the MRF does not get completed. The members do not report their service hours. So that is a goal for you guys as club secretaries to really, really encourage your membership to first report hours and then you record those hours accurately. Because this decon, I can't tell you, I don't want to say the word embarrassed because it wasn't like embarrassed. I was disappointed. That's the word I'm looking for. I was very disappointed at the minimal number of Vegas key clubs. Okay. Um, in all the categories that existed, because I know you guys are all working and you are all working hard and you all should be recognized for all that hard work. Okay. And the MRF is one of those things that that's kind of the beginning part of that recognition so you it's, guys have a big job and you have a really important job don't be afraid to reach out for help because you have ltgs you have past secretaries that are all willing to help you vegas often doesn't get recognized especially for like club like diamond distinguished and distinguished clubs so I never got to see it during my four years that much, but I hope you guys will. Um, you got this, we won't put you down. Yes, please don't let Santi down or your LTGs. They are there to help you. One of the things that I saw that like kind of helps with um, MRP um, and Distinguished and Diamond Distinguished is the fact that like, if you're more likely to do like work on it throughout the term, it'll be more like, you're more likely to accurately report it and then it'll be there when like secretaries that i know from last year that um constantly every month updated the mrp program they were able to get accurate results for each of the members and their members were able to get recognized um at decon but like let's say it's january and you're turning it in and you haven't worked on this tab are you, do you really, like, are you really going to want to look through an entire year's worth of events, attendance, every single member that attended RTC or division events or anything like that? You're going to want to not do it, even though you should. So if you work on it throughout the term, it'll just make your life easier. And there's a higher chance that your members will get recognized because you're going to have accurate reporting. Um, yes. Same thing with, oh my God, where is it? Same thing with annual report. If you look at it throughout the term, I don't know why it's messed up. If you look at it throughout the term, you'll, again, it's a tracker. 
So you'll get to see how close you you'll get to see how close you and your club are. Yes, please listen to me on this. I served as an LTG, a secretary, and on the member recognition committee, so I know everything about member recognition and club recognition. So, any more questions about the MRF? Anything that either Ms. Santi or the current LTGs want to say? Because you guys are all welcome to say anything that you have. If not, someone. Yes. Go ahead, this... Reagan. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Minnie. Sorry. Uh, this is being switched to Google Sheets. I unfortunately don't have it right now, but you guys will get it before the end of the month, hopefully. And Reagan had her hand up. Can you guys, when filling out the MRFs, if you have your club's um, board officer emails, can you use those and not your school emails? It just makes things a little easier when we're sending out newsletters so you guys like aren't in college and you're still getting your home club's newsletters or home division's newsletters. And rather, it just transfers over to the next person with that email. Thank you. And that's something for, like I encourage not just for secretaries, but for every club officer to utilize their um, like club officer emails because not only is it like that's the direct line of communication between LTG and officer. It also has everything that the previous officers have done. So you can look back at it and see what previous officers have done and like take ideas and get some help. On the service record, do we start with March or April hours? April, yes. Um, do, 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 do. Anything else? Anything else on the MRF? Any of the tabs? And I promise, like I said, it may seem like daunting and overwhelming at first, but it does get easier as you go on through the term. For me, it's become like second nature. I've done two years of this kind of stuff, so it's become second nature to me, and it, got, and it will be second nature for you guys as well. All righty, if not, I'm gonna stop presenting. Uh, yes, you guys have started your term as of April, 12, April 11th, <laughs> technically. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing this and I'll go back to the presentation. And you guys will be able to find like the Club MRF once it's on Google Sheets. Your LTGs will send it to you regardless. And this is me asking the LTGs to send it to you regardless. But if you don't have it or if you lose it, you can always find it on the CNH website. Um, Which don't bother checking right now because I checked this morning and it's not there yet. They still have last year's. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Minnie checked also because I Minnie would do that. So it's not there. We've emailed asking for it again. So hopefully like it shows up quickly. Yes. Alrighty, so you guys completed the MRF, congrats. Now you have to email it to all the people. So this is a screenshot I took from um, one of my clubs who submitted an MRF, and this is the perfect emailing format. So first of all, your subject must have your club name in it. It is so, in, it is so aggravating when clubs don't put their club name and you have to search through their MRF um, or you have to search through like, the email recipients and everything to find out which club they're from. So please put in the club name and the subject. It makes life a lot easier. A uh, little greeting, and then the file needs a club name too. Again, it is very aggravating when you don't have your club name in there because then we have to actually open the MRF and see. Just easier and to find it. If Las Vegas is here, please write out Las Vegas because LVA and Las Vegas get confused together. Um, and there was another, I'll think of the other one. I'll type it in the chat. There is another two clubs that they have the same initials for their high schools. Centennial and Cheyenne. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah those are the two. They're in my division, so that's what you would know. Um, <laughs> yeah. but yes, so what's it called? A general like intro. And then you have to say, West Korea can just be what? Yeah. 
any yeah like the ctas you can abbreviate that okay yes so the body of the email please tell us every tab that you updated for the current month or else your ltg and soon your division secretary We'll have to go through the MRF and go through each tab and see which tab you updated. And that's a lot of unnecessary work for us. So please just say what tabs you updated. This person also said, yeah, we won't be happy. I wasn't happy when I got that. Um, so like this person also uh, said like what, like what they added in each tab. However, you don't need to do that. You can if you want. But you just have to say what tabs you updated, please, please. OK, so the MRF, and write this down, and like mark it in your calendars. The MRF is due to all those people um, on the last day of each month. So like this month's MRF would be due on April 30th by 6 PM. So it's not 11.59. By 6 PM, it's due on the last day of each month. So usually what clubs do is they start to ask members for service hours like around the 20th or a little bit before that. So you would want to ask members for all their monthly service hours towards the end and then quickly fill up the AMRF. So yes, that is that. This is a perfect example of what um, an MRF email should be like or like the subject and body should be like. Um, do, 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 do. Moving on, tips and resources. Please ask questions. If you guys are confused, like in the beginning of the term, which everyone will understand, if you guys are confused, ask your LTG, ask your president, ask past, uh, past secretaries. Don't just sit there, because again, the, the MRF is how your clubs get recognized it's how your members get recognized it's how you accurately see how your club is doing so ask questions don't get lazy please this is like a like a year around thing it's not just like it'll be like hard for a few months and then it'll get easier no it's the year round thing even during the summer so don't get lazy with that um and like miss Santi said you have probably the most important job on the club board. So take it seriously, understand that. Uh, look at previous examples. Like I said before, you guys should by now have access to your um, club secretary emails. If you don't, please contact last year's officers for that. Um, but you should have your club secretary email. And in that should be all the MRFs and all the emails that were sent from previous secretaries. So use that as a guide and turn in your MRFs in time. <laughs> Please. That's a very big thing. Secretary in general is very like time based thing. You have to turn in everything on time. Please do that. It makes life for the LTGs and division secretaries easier as well. <clears throat> Additional resources um, on the cyber keys on the CNH website, there is like a tab for secretaries, which can I like edit it or click it? I don't think I can click it, but there is a tab on the CNH website for um, secretaries that you can look back through throughout the year. Again, it doesn't have the club MRF for right now, but it will soon, I promise. Um, and other resources, LTGs, division secretaries, and past secretaries, not just from your own club. And I'll get into that in a bit. But yeah, don't be afraid to ask your LTGs. You can ask me too, but I'll be in college. Um, so m l just ask them first. OK, and that is the end of my presentation. Wow, I got it done in an hour. OK, let's go. Um, does anyone have any questions about any? Please don't leave the meeting yet. <laughs> I saw someone left the meeting. I was like, wait, no, please don't leave the meeting yet. But um, when will the new secretary start to turn in the MRFs? Um, your first MRF will be due on April 30th. <sighs> any more questions? <laughs> and if you guys have Oh yeah, Austin, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to add 
when it comes to any club MRFs, any submissions for that, um, a good rule of thumb that I've been trying to keep, sort of, um, is kind of thinking, tricking your mind into thinking it's due a couple days earlier than it actually is due. So you aren't rushing towards last minute to put in any hours, anything. So that's just a good rule of thumb. Yes. Have a reminder like a few days before. Yeah. All right. Yes, you are official. Um, other officers would be able to turn in the MRF as well. Um, not ideally. Like, ideally, it would just be your job to turn in the MRF. If you are busy um, or if you have, like, some circumstances, you can obviously ask the other officer members to help you. But ideally, it would just be you submitting it. Um, will we need Excel? No, you will be working on Google Sheets and... Please let it be available by April 30. It should be available. Where can we find the MRF as of now? Like I said, since it is going to be switching to Google Sheets, you guys don't have an MRF as of right now. You should be getting it in a few days. Um, we're praying it'll be available sooner than later. Yeah, basically. Um, when you guys do have your MRF, your LTG will send it out immediately. Um, it'll be on the cyber key. You'll be able to find it. But for right now, you don't technically have one and if you have signed up for the district secretary reflector group it will automatically be emailed to that address the mrf should only be shared with the people you mentioned before right would it not be ideal to share it with members um i wouldn't suggest sharing it with members because there's a lot of information on there about other members that they don't want like you don't want them to correct know. If a member asks, like, oh, how many service hours do I have or how close am I to bronze level or something like that, you can specifically tell them. But don't share the MRF with members. You can share it with the entire club board, though. Like, those people that I mentioned, like LTG, division secretary, advisors and everything, that's a given. But if you want to share it with, like, your president or other club board mem or other board members, you can do that as well. All the board members should have access to the MRF to look at it. Oh, yeah. And then sheets and now you can like yeah watch. and you can actually turn it so that they have um viewer privilege the advisor should have editor access also um that way if they go in they aren't accidentally changing something um but they should be able to see it as the officer board um as for members as many said there is private information on there that your members should not know about other members uh so uh i think amy said make a separate sheet with the hours yes okay some people have done that um i know secretary sometimes they put um like they would share they would make a, sh a separate sheet but with just the mrp tab and then that they would share with members so then like members can see how close they are to each um level of recognition there we go um if we had members turn in hours for this month from months in the previous term should we update it no so those are wasted hours yeah sadly those are wasted hours i mean it it can count towards their terms last term's service hours so if they were at 49 hours and they did one more hour and they turned it in late that can count it's up to your club board when hours were due for seniors to get cords whether or not it goes towards that or whatever um but you definitely want to have set deadlines in your club for things like that because um you don't want a senior walking up to the advisor going where's my club cord i turned in all 50 hours yesterday your advisor can't order cords overnight to start with that's number one thing and number two normally we give the cords right before graduation so they don't get lost they're like turning those hours in like two months late okay so things that are like that sort of thing are the things they wear around their neck during graduation they're called cords and they represent the different clubs that you're in and key club has one so if you hit your 50 hours is the minimum your club could set that higher okay they that's part of the bylaws and stuff of your club but 50 hours is the minimum to get a key club cord 
Uh, what is the reflector group? So I'll explain this kind of. But every year, CNH has different reflector groups for each of the officers. And you guys, the district secretary should have or should soon uh, make a secretary reflector group. Um, you won't have to like you won't be you won't have to join that yourself. What will what will happen is your LTG will submit your um, secretary emails to the district's secretary and then they'll automatically add you into the reflector group. Um, I don't know if he's made it yet or if he's gonna plan if he's planning on making it, but yeah, just be on the lookout for that. Um <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, but anyways. One thing that I will say, a good rule of thumb that I've learned from the past like two, three years is to have members, whether they're seniors or not, have members complete all, try and complete all 50 hours by January because that's when member recognition is due. So like, you, so like even if you're, even if the members have 50 hours, but they reached 50 hours in like February, it won't count for member recognition. So if you want your members to get recognized, they have to have 50 hours before January 30th-ish. Yeah. Um, I would tell them before January 30th, like the 25th, because your MRF is due the 30th, and you don't want them turning them in on the day that it's due. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, so try and have that. Um, I know some clubs, they'll do like, if you get 50 hours by like March, they'll like, um, they'll like recognize you. And you can do that obviously, um, but for district recognition, it's by January. And so everything in that MRP tab is by January for district recognition. And the more you let people know about that 50 hours and the more that you give updates on where they stand with the hours, the more likely they are to complete their hours. Okay. Some people can break things up into their own little goals. Other people cannot. So it's always advisable for you to say, okay, the goal for our club is five hours a month. Everybody should get five hours every month so that they add up to get the 50 hours by the time they're needed. Um, Amy's got one. If someone turns in their hours late, should we resubmit the MRF or wait to the next month? That's up to you. If it's like by a few hours, you can resubmit it. Um, but if it's like a few days late, just wait until the next month. Oh, oh my God, I almost forgot to say this. And I guess this wouldn't matter since it's on Google Sheets, but I'll still explain it anyways. Let's say, so let's say you do April's tab, like let's say you do the MRF for April and you fill out all the necessary tabs. Don't get a new MRF and do the May tab. Like some some clubs have done that, and I'm like, why? It's just more work. So you get one MRF and you update it throughout the term. You don't like do the April tab, send it, and then do the May tab, and then send an MRF with just the May tab filled out. Like it's like a continuous thing that you'll update the tabs each month. And like I said. Usually this was a problem with Excel because like people would have to like automatically like actually physically save it to their computer, but it's on Google Sheets now, so you guys should be fine. Um, we uh, yes, you add your own hours, yes. And if you have an LTG at your club, your LTG's hours go in your MRF. Yes. So not just like LTG hours, um, I will like, your LTG will, should, should qualify for member recognition because they host so many events. Like all of the DCMs, they should have every single division event in the MRP tab filled out because they hosted it technically, so they attended it. Um, so please be sure to like include your LTG in um, that MRP tab and everything that they do and everything in the MRF as well. And they actually give you extra points in the MRF. Oh yeah. As long as you click, because they're a district officer. 
So every club that has an LTG gets a couple extra points in their AAR score. I always say that wrong. Did I say those letters wrong? A -A Annual Achievement Report Score, yeah. Okay, I said it right this time. <laughs> does OTC count as a training event? Yes, it does. So you guys already have one training event for MRP down. Um, say that we are absent in one of the meetings who will record people. Um, that is up for your club to decide. Some people have the vice president do it. Some people have like um, representatives or SAA do it. That's up to you. Or club. your chair of the event could do it. Yeah. So like if you had a committee that decided we want to put on a walk, I don't know, a walk for puppies, the puppy shelter or something, whoever brought it up and whoever's chair of that event, they could record the service hours. But if you're not going to be there, it's really important that you have a conversation with whoever that person is so that they know that they're doing it because it's not a normal job for that person. Yes, and that's why like, well, I haven't experienced this since all of my events this year were um, online, but when we have in-person events, don't like encourage obviously like bring it up to your members like in, um like encourage your members to go but also have them sign up like if they plan to go have them uh sign up if some officers attended uh officer training at decon that would count right miss Nancy? yes okay yes all righty any other questions I'm going to be waiting a little extra longer just in case anyone has any questions about secretary, MRF, any of the other little things that secretary does. Um, I'm going to stop presenting. I am going to stop recording because I did turn it on. I forgot right at the beginning. So I missed like the first couple minutes, but I did record all of it.